Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, people, she didn't even have to clear her throat. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's real singing there. That's singing. She didn't have to clear her throat and prepare. She just hit it. That's what I'm talking about. Conversations. Conversations with with SD Booker. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's that jam. That's that cut bitter <laughs> off of the new <laughs> off of the new album, Country Soul Tunes. Today, fellas, women, kids, dogs, and cats, we got the musical artist Blythe <laughs> Dennis with us. Yay! <laughs> I really appreciate it. Hey, the honor is all mine. I appreciate you taking the time out to uh, sit with me. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, I had to. I had to sit with you. I've been jamming that new album. You know, my wife <laughs> Yaya put me down with it, and uh, I was like, "Damn, oh, yes, yeah." I was like, "Man, this is this is nice." And uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you really did your thing on that album. Yeah, uh, I'm really impressed. And I said, man, I got to sit down with this woman and, and really, you know, see what what's the story behind the album, what's the story behind her, her artistry, and uh, just to get to know you. So, yeah, we're going to let the people get to know you along with me. So, uh, okay. yes, yes. So let's take it back. Let the people know how, I guess, we first came to know one another. This mm-hmm. is our first time meeting face to face so i guess right. virtually right. right but uh i guess around six years ago maybe maybe mm-hmm. six years ago uh i was co-owning right. yeah i was co-owning a club and we were looking for uh an act you know a musical act to come in maybe every weekend or every other weekend i can't remember and mm-hmm. uh yeah, yeah, my wife was telling me about you. You were with a band at the time, I believe. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, she played me some of y'all stuff. And uh, I was like, man, yeah, we got to we gotta bring a new man. Uh, <laughs> and just when I think we were trying to get something scheduled to get a meeting, I fell out with the other owners. And I think you... you, you I think uh, I fell out with the band. <laughs> right, right. And you, yeah, you fell out with the band. <laughs> I was like, wow. So... Anyway, timing, timing. It, it, it happens, but look at us. We right here facing <laughs> one another, and uh, so hey, full circle. It's all good. Right. It's all right. good. Right. So I mentioned my wife, Yaya. She put me down with you. She's mm-hmm. from Grambling. You're from Grambling. Yes. 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 So take me back. Take me back to Grambling. How was it for you growing up in Grambling? Well, for me, Gremlin, I mean, you I, I take it you've been there. I've been right? there a few times, yes. So from the looks of it, Gremlin is a, a small town, primarily known for the college. Um, so both of my parents worked on campus, but my mom still works on campus. She's a professor. But I was kind of a campus kid. So I kind of went, if after school, I went to school with the lab school. Um, up until 11th grade when I went to Ruston High, but my nursery school to elementary, middle, and part of high school, I was um, in the lab school. So I was a campus kid. My mom would walk over from Woodson to pick me up from school, or I would be in my dad's office. So anywhere between there. So people just knew me as Al and Sarah's daughter, a baby girl. I have two older siblings. Right. So growing up in Grandma was was cool in hindsight is much cooler than i thought it was when i was younger because gremlin is like 
world renowned, right? And I didn't right. realize that when I'm a kid, like I'm at my dad's office, I go to Mr. Eddie Robinson office to get some candy. You know, it, right. it wasn't a big deal to me. So, uh, but Grambling is a very uh, close knit community. Everybody knows everybody. So, um, I'm I'm definitely that that reflects in my personality for sure. Um, but people from Louisiana, we just a warm warm people welcoming people and that's what I try to bring to my music as well as to my live shows just make people feel comfortable in their home yeah I, I definitely can agree with that I've been to Gremlin man maybe maybe five or six times and uh mm -hmm. they've always been warm to me so I, I definitely can agree with that now did you come from a, a musical family actually well my dad might say otherwise a uh, funny story when I did most mostly most of the young women in the city when you were around 16 17 you did debutantes so I did debutantes um and my we we had like a, a performance type of thing so everybody would have like a talent and a lot of people if you didn't go to church with me you didn't know that I could sing really so my talent was singing so afterwards everybody was like Wow, we didn't know Blythe could sing. Where did she get that from? My dad, he's a quiet man, but he was like, well, you know, I was in the Greenville Park Glee Club oh, yeah. and we joked about that to this day. So he was in the Glee Club and apparently my grandmother, my mom's mother was a really good singer. Unfortunately, she passed before I was born, but uh, she was a great singer. And one of my mom's brothers is a really good singer and he still sings back at um, where my parents are from in Hammond, like around town or with church, or he used to be in like a little chorale group. So I guess I would say I get it from my grandmother yeah. and my dad. Yes, yeah, in your blood. <laughs> yeah, your dad taking yeah. all the credit for that. Yeah, he right. Said, that, he, that came from my side of the family. <laughs> no, doubt. no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Now, like I said, man, I've been jamming this album at, at least, at least once a week. For the oh, last, man. for the yeah, for the last month, I, I like it, man. I like every cut on it, really. I don't, I really don't know what's my favorite, really. But what, is, what would, how would you describe your style? Because I see some country twang in there. You can tell you, you can tell you from the south. Okay. I, 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 there's some hip hop in there, mm. a hip hop element. There's some neo soul. There's some R and B. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy, it, it all meshes well. Like, so how mm -hmm. would you describe your style? Is there a name for it? And how did you get all those genres to mesh so well? Well, you know, I don't really know if I've come up with a name for it. I think something close would be like, you know, how Bryson Tiller says he does trap soul. But it's not really trap. It's just Southern. So... Right. I, when people ask me what type of artist I am, I just say soul, because I think soul is the core of all the other genres. They all stem from that, in my opinion. Soul and gospel, right? Because most most uh, music forms has a little element of gospel as well. But I, I really don't know. I just take things that I, I listen to or things that I grew up listening to and that's just what comes out. Um, I will probably credit the Southern part to my older brother because um, he was like a DJ and stuff. He still DJs now, but he really put me on to my hip hop influences, um, especially my Southern hip hop, like A-Ball, MJG, you know, all the Houston rappers, UGK. Uh, we both love Big Crit. That's, that's who I told my producer. I said, listen to Big Crit. When you when you making these beats and this is the sound that I want because yeah. when you think about southern hip hop it has those uh, blues influences it has those gospel influences sometimes even jazz influences right so um, that's that's really where my uh, core and I like to think I got a little bit of my ear from everybody in my family I don't think they really re realize that. Right. But like, for instance, my mom, she was really big on like Jill Scott, India Ivory, Erica Badu. I listened to that with her. My dad was a jazz guy. He loved Sade and Miles Davis and Billie Holiday. So I got that from him. My brother, I got the hip hop. 
my older sister, she kind of put me on the pop and R&B type of thing and a little hip hop. She got me a little Kim City when I was probably a little too young to be listening, but right, uh, right. You know, I got my popular music from her, popular slash R&B. So I don't, I don't know if they know that when they see this, they'll know that they had a part to play in my musical ear for sure. Right, right. You know, it's funny you mentioned Pimp C and, and Big Crit. I definitely can can see that influence. Uh, yeah. Big Crit has slept on. He, he slept on. I, I think. I now, feel like I feel like he's definitely slept on, but I feel like more so now he really don't care no more. Because I think a lot of rappers that get slept on, like Wale, Big Crit, people like that, they have that chip on their shoulder, like they like, right. and people realize that I'm great. But I think the more that he kind of releases that uh, pressure. Right. more people are being drawn to him. I feel like he's definitely getting more attention than he deserves these days, for right. sure. But he's definitely slept on. He's he's definitely in my top five, for right. sure. No doubt, no doubt. Now, I asked you what was your style, but probably the best way to describe your style is the title of the album. You know, yeah. Country Soul Tunes. Yeah. Pimp C. <laughs> yeah, Pimp C has... Country rap tunes. He said, "We ain't hip hop." Ah, okay, okay. So you notice on country soul tunes at the end, I'm like, and these ain't no R and B records. These country soul tunes. That's what <laughs> right. I got it from. Okay, yeah, yeah. Pimp C used to always shout that. that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's definitely yeah. You you probably carved out a style uh, that hasn't been uh, relevant or carved out yet. Maybe yeah, so. Definitely country soul <laughs> tunes. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> now, I won't break down every track, but I want you to explain, you know, what motivated the title and the lyrics to some of these tracks that, that really stand mm -hmm. out. Okay. Something that really stood out was a uh, hometown hero. Now mm -hmm. man, that, that, that really resonated with me. Because uh, I haven't moved away from home, per mm -hmm. se. I was born and raised in, in Dallas. But I don't live in my old neighborhood. And mm -hmm. I always want to represent from right. for, uh, for, for where I came from, you know, the neighborhood I grew up in. I always mm -hmm. want to make them proud. And there's nothing like somebody showing you appreciation and love from where you came from. You know, I do appreciate people, you know, uh, you know, uh, honoring me or, or appreciating me from around the mm -hmm. world or around the nation. But when somebody mm -hmm. really knows where I came from and, and, and saw my climb, and they really have a different appreciation for me. So can you break right. down that, that hometown hero? So with that song, I was really kind of like talking my... You know, like, because I feel like I don't really get to do that very often. And that's what was so much fun about this project is that I really got to tap into the rapping influences as well as the singing. Because I always threw a little rap in there on all the projects that I've done, but not as much as this one. I think this one is probably majority rapping um, than anything. But with that song, I just really, this album period, was really a love letter to the South for me. And that particular song was for my hometown. Um, Cause it's been hard. Like I've been out here for 10 years and, you know, regardless of the things that I run into here, whenever I go home, like people always make me feel like they are proud of me, you know, even when I don't necessarily feel too proud of myself or I feel like I could be doing more or I should, I should be farther in my career right. um that song was really me like all right forget all the nonsense i'm not waiting on nobody else to give me nothing i'm about to take it because i know that i can do it and you know a lot of times when you especially as a woman and i don't want to take away from from the men you know i don't i don't i can't re relate with the struggle but right. i know as a woman in the industry it's very hard for people to take you seriously you can have all the talent in the world but, you know, sometimes you, you're going to come against opposition, especially as a woman. People want to take advantage of you or you feeling like you got to depend on somebody to put you on. I'm like, no, nah, I forget that. Like, I'm 
I'm done being humble. I'm done with all that. Like I'm coming for what is for me. So that's what that song was about. And initially that was supposed to be the intro song. Oh, wow. I could definitely do that. Yeah, but I decided to put it at the end because I feel like listening to it, you can listen to it on a loop. So it's perfectly like to lead right on back into the first song. So. Right, right, right. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. Now, what's up with this track number five, Lust Drunk? What's that about? <laughs> now that now that's now that's Yaya's favorite track. <laughs> you know that that song. It most my music is very personal, but that one was definitely a um a personal song for me. Um, just you know. I don't know. I feel like for me, people think that women be the ones that always be like, oh, you know, I'm in love, you know, all this. But sometimes it's the other way around. No doubt. And if you listen to the Heartbreak EP, because I was really deep up in my feelings on that one, which was before Country Soul Tune. So it's an evolution to kind of like just having agency over myself as a woman and knowing that, you know, if I want to deal with somebody, that's my business. And I could be classy about it and I could be respectable about it. Um, but just kind of owning my womanhood on that particular song and just getting caught up with somebody who ended up, you know, falling for me. So that's right. what that song was about. And then maybe me too kind of falling a little bit in the end. Right. But um, I got to have my homeboy get on that one, uh, Butler. He he represented for the guys on that one, but when I wrote that song, it was from a personal experience of me uh, dealing with someone and, you know, you think you have understanding and it kind of turns into something more than what it was supposed to be. So, Hey, listen, I, I've been there before. <laughs> uh, I thought I thought I put it down and, and she she just wanted one thing. And, uh, oh, and, no. and she, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, usually, she you, yeah, she flipped the script. And and uh, it threw me off because <laughs> that's not usually the way it goes, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, I that's was definitely. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was in my feelings. It wasn't that I was so deeply into her. It's just like she played me and flipped the script on right. me. I didn't know how to handle it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I could, the other way around, you know. Like, right, right, right. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of brothers won't admit that, but they they've been played before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you who's that brother on on the end of that. You said his name is Butler. Yes, he's. Uh, I met him out here in Dallas through my producer, actually. Okay. And I was trying to get somebody that had that Houston sound, like, right. and he sounds a lot like um, Bun B to me a little yeah. bit. Like he kind of brought that element. And look, I don't have a Bun B budget right now, so I had right, to. Get, right. You know, somebody who's just as talented, but somebody who I, I could actually access. So he did his thing. When they sent it to me, when he did it at the studio, I called. I'm like, oh, I'm going off. I kept playing it over and over again because, yeah. of course, it had my part on there already. But just with his part, it just was perfect. Was yeah, perfect. he did He did his thing on there. You did your thing, too. But that, that shocked me. Uh, his flow was, was flawless. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, that brother sound like you from Houston. But to hear that he's from Dallas, man, that makes me more proud. Well, don't call me on that. I don't know if he's from Dallas, but he definitely lives okay. here. He, he might. He be. lives here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna, we gonna claim him then. We gonna right. Claim him right. Hours now. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I know it could be hard when you're a creator, you're an artist, and mm-hmm. a lot of people don't get us. You know, I'm mm-hmm. not a musician. I'm not a, a musical artist. I'm a writer. Creative. I'm a creator. And a lot of people can't relate to when I need my time alone, when I'm in creative mode. And Mm -hmm. I can't have certain conversations with everybody because Mm -hmm. as an artist, we got some quirkiness to us. And then we, we, yeah, we're kind of different. Yeah. 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 So how has it been for you as a woman to connect with, 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 uh, other people? on the dating scene. How, how has that been a challenge as an artist? Have you had to struggle with balancing a love life in your artistry? Well, you know, as far as the dating scene is concerned, it is very hard because people 
especially with like, and I always tell people this when I'm having conversations with my homeboys or, and I'm like, y'all don't understand how lucky y'all are to be able to, it's, it's easy for y'all to find somebody that's going to ride with y'all. Like how many stories you hear where a man working on his dream and he got his woman by his side, like she, she with him ride or die. It's harder for women. Cause a lot of times, you know, men are attracted to the ambition, but once you're, you know, in real close proximity to it, and it's like, my life is not all about you, then it's like, well, where do I fit in it? Right. You know, and I, I can't fault anybody for that. Right. Um, that's just not the person for me. I, I think I probably need somebody who is in a, a business capacity or kind of has their own thing going where it's like, they have to spread their time around and have to multitask. I think they will be more understanding of what I'm doing, but it, it can be very hard. It can be very disappointing because it's like, you know, I want all those things too. Like I want to have a family. I want to, you know, cook three meals a day for the family and maybe go to the studio in the back and do my stuff. Right. You know, right. it's just trying to create the life that I want without compromising my dreams yes because yes. i don't feel like i should have to do that nobody asked me to compromise their dreams it kind of right. you know your relationship and your family is kind of shaped around what you what you do so right. why can't i have the same thing so i mean i date and stuff i try not to take it too personally um and just where i'm at in life now i'm really just about having a good time and still having that focus on my career and if somebody comes along that can fit with that and is okay with that then I'm cool with that but if not you know it is what it is I, I think I'm in my prime so to speak right? I'm in my early 30s I don't have no kids it's just me so right. I, I have the opportunity to kind of just do what works for me right so. right well I, I will tell you as a man it, it is it does take a certain type of man to be in a relationship with a woman who's in the industry mm -hmm. with a lot of men. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, true. right. Because you got to go to the studio. I mean, you might have late night sessions, weekend sessions. You know, it, it could go on for hours in that studio. Mm -hmm. So it does take a certain kind of man. And, you know, I was even faced with that, with that challenge. It, it, it tested me. You know, Yaya was, uh, she was a barber. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she would do uh, get lessons from certain barbers. It's a male-dominated industry, right? Right. And, you know, hey, I'm telling you, I would send my son with her. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey, Caleb, hey, you get, get, go, go, go ride with her. Yeah, <laughs> go ride with her. <laughs> and, and, and also, I started studying about barbering. I didn't want to be a barber, but I started studying the barbering industry because I felt the way a man teaching my woman something. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you were proactive about it, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My homegirl, I was telling my homegirl everything that Yaya was uh, doing in school and, and what she does, the, the technical side. And she act like, she said, you act like you in school. Hey, <laughs> hey, I'm going to know just as much as them brothers know that that's teaching us something. So, right. yeah. So that, that insecurity <laughs> did, did raise up in me. But, you know, I handle my business. But, yeah, I well, know it could be a challenge. We, we're we thinking about young, when I was younger, too, right? Because I'm right. only 33. So these are relationships in your 20s. Mm -hmm. You know, your brain don't fully develop until you're 26 anyway. So, it's, it, you know, it's yeah. just one of those things. I think for sure if I just wanted a conventional career, I, I would definitely be married by now, for yeah. sure. But... It's just happened to not go that way, and I'm okay with it. But I think other people are more like, so when you get married, we're going to have some kids. I'm like, can you ask me if I'm good first? Uh, like, don't ask me about that. Like, that's not – my dream in life is not only to be a mom and a wife. Like, I, I have goals. So I'm going to try to go for that now. And, you know, I, that could come along as – I feel like what's meant to be will happen. I have three nieces and a nephew and another nephew on the way so i've been an auntie for a long time so i'm i'm good right now on the kids front for sure right right <laughs> now you you mentioned you know being a female it, you face a different type of challenge than a male mm -hmm. in the industry you know people mm -hmm. said people don't always take you seriously 
uh, uh, being a female. Now, can you expound on that? Because I have my own thoughts around that, even though I haven't been deeply in the music industry, but I've heard mm -hmm. stories. And I heard it's, it's a savage game. And a lot of times brothers asking for a favor for a favor. And right. Yeah, it always ain't it, on the up and up. It's hard, especially if you are by society standards an attractive woman. It's like people like are vultures, you know, and if you don't have a, your head on straight and you don't have morals, people talk you into anything. So it was very hard for me in the beginning, just kind of trying to understand how things go. And then two people taking advantage of you, uh, getting free work from you. Like when I first moved out here, one of my friends had introduced me to one of his friends that had a studio. And eventually, you know, after they heard me sing, they want me to come get on everybody track and all that. And I'm like, okay, I'm just excited to be going to the studio. Right. And I'm just like, they're not paying me. Now, granted, that's a, a, a completely different conversation, right? Because um, sometimes in the industry, you do have to kind of do a lot of things for free just so that you can get that experience. Um, I think it's important for people to know how to barter, not just women, everybody. Sometimes right. you have to barter. You want me to get on this track? Okay, how about you do a track for me? You can you can trade track for track or, or whatever. But in this particular situation, they were just wanting me to do something all the time. And I'm driving out here, anybody giving no gas money, nothing. So one day I was just like, are y'all paying me for this? And they was like, well, you didn't ask. And I was like, damn, you know, I mean, right, you, right. you're not wrong because I didn't ask. So it's just as you grow your following, as you get to different levels, that's when you kind of can negotiate. OK, well, for, as far as I'm concerned, I don't do free shows. Mm -hmm. I don't do open mics unless I'm doing it for a friend or something like that. Or right. you just having fun. I don't do that because I feel like, why would I do this for free when I can go get paid? And if I'm a scene for free, I can go do it on the internet and post it on my page and give views and impressions and shares and things like that. So I feel like in the beginning, I definitely was doing open mics. I used to go to Profit Bar when I first moved out here uh, with Erica Badu's band, RC and the Grits used to play there. And I would wait every Wednesday, sign the list. Like, it's definitely a hustle. And I don't feel like Anything should be given to anybody, but I do feel like you have to be smart, especially as a woman. You have to be smart and you have to know what your morals are and what you're willing to do to get there. Because, you know, if I didn't have no morals, I probably could have been where I wanted to be or right. maybe not. You know, it could have been false promises or whatever, but it's just very important to know who you are. And I feel like things are, are blossoming a lot more for me at, at this age because I'm more prepared for it mentally. Um, I'm not the same insecure girl getting on stage with my eyes closed singing like I've I've put in that work. Right, so right. as you put in that work, you kind of have that that finish on you, you know? So right. it just takes time, but you know, it, it is hard out here for the ladies, probably more so in the R and B pop area, but it's just as bad in, in Neo Soul and Soul too, I, I feel like. But I think with pop and R and B girls it's more about the physical mm -hmm. than it is about the voice. So I don't know. That's just yeah, nice but, thing. Yeah, you know what, just from a male's perspective, but first mm -hmm. off, I want to commend you for not selling your soul. Don't yeah, don't ever sell your essence. You know, things will things will work out the way they're supposed to. But from a male mm -hmm. perspective, uh or maybe I can just speak for me. Uh, maybe I can't speak for all males. Uh, if if the woman is talented, yeah, I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care about the the physicality of her. And mm -hmm. and you know, beauty and sexiness is subjective. You know, right? It's in the eye of the beholder. So everybody got their own flavor. But uh, but you take a a person like Missy Elliott. You know, she doesn't fit what society says is beautiful mm -hmm. or, or sexy, but you can't deny the talent. Right. You know, right. you can't deny the talent. Uh, Jill Scott, beautiful woman. But if you go look at the magazines, you know, most of the magazines, you're not going to see Jill Scott size, right? But beautiful, mm -hmm. sexy woman. So, but mm -hmm. I think it with men, I can't speak for women, but with men, if the talent is undeniable, 
we we buying it. We're engaging. Yeah. Yeah, and we, I yeah. think that too depends on, you know, your ear. Some right. people don't like neo so Some people like um pop and, and mainstream R and B, which is fine with me. I feel like uh with my particular niche, um I'll find my people who like the type of music that I do will find they will find you. Right. No doubt. So that that part isn't really uh, that appealing to me. I'm more of an introvert anyway. Um, I can be extroverted when I need to be, right. but I definitely have to have my downtime because oh, yeah. if it's too if I'm if it's too much, I can't handle it. Like it's yeah, I can relate. Taking the time, you know, like we said, yeah. it's creative, and on top of that, being an introvert, it's a lot. Yeah, I can so. relate. Yeah, you gotta get your downtime. <laughs> right now, now you mentioned the business side of the of the game. Mm-hmm. Now, do you at this stage, ten years in the game, well, ten years out here, mm-hmm. do you lean towards the record label deal or going independent? I think it depends on the type of deal that you make. Okay. Um, I would probably, me personally, I would probably be more interested in a production deal or a distribution deal, not not necessarily like a. a 360 deal or something like that because I think the neo soul market is so much smaller than the R&B market is so I don't know how uh, beneficial that would be for me that would be more beneficial for the label but I do feel like in this day and age with all of the different avenues that people can use to get their music out there um, it is a benefit to the independent artist but then being that everybody has a platform is saturated right so you have to find ways to kind of put yourself out there um a creative ways to kind of get out there so i don't know if if you get the right if i were to get the right deal for sure i would take it but no doubt. and it's really not even all about the money for me it's about what you're trying to get me to do because i don't want to change who i am because I feel like that's that's how I've gotten as far as I have gotten and, and the audience that I have been able to cultivate with me being myself. But if it's something that would be beneficial for me and it's not me compromising myself, I'm OK with that. I, th- I just think it's all about where you see yourself at the end of the day, like what's your goals? Right. And if that particular deal can kind of get you a step closer without you compromising, why not? But if it's not, I mean, you still can do your music. It no just doubt. might be a little bit harder, you know? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Now, I know you're fresh off of this project. Mm-hmm. Country Soul Tunes, people. Country Soul Tunes. You can cop that mm-hmm. on Spotify. That's where I listen to it at. You can cop it on Apple Music, uh, iTunes. YouTube. Any of your, you, you, yes, YouTube. Any of your major streaming, uh, streaming services, you can get this album. Country mm-hmm. Soul Tunes. Now, what do you have lined up next? Anything lined up next? So I really wanted to do like a tiny desk type of show. I love for that. Yeah. Soul tunes. Um, but with those numbers going right back up after the holidays, I was a little apprehensive and I still haven't even been out performing this year yet because I'm still kind of nervous about um, all that. So I think we're going to just do, um, we're just going to shoot the show as if it was uh, audience but just kind of do that tiny this type of thing because I really want to take I really want to do a lot more videos this year um I released my first video ever um the day before Christmas when I went back home and shot the video in November and I dropped it in December so I really liked that I really liked um, how that was received. So I feel like now's the time for me to just put more visuals out because I can reach more people and I'm also not compromising anybody's health and safety. Right. So uh, maybe more so towards the middle of the year or maybe have that live show, but I really want to do more live music performing recordings for sure. So that's what we're working on now. I've been in talks with my producer and some of my other musician friends about doing that. Um, I definitely want to do some more visuals for this project. Um, I definitely want to do one for Lush Drunk. And I really want to do one for uh, Getaway, Runaway. Um, 
that one I, I, I have like the idea of all that and for bitter too. So right. I think I There's think so many should, tracks. <laughs> right, right. There's so many good I'm, tracks. If I could do one for all of them, you know, I, I, I would love to, but you know, I'm I'm self financed. So I'm I'm just right. trying to do what I can with what I got. So but definitely more more content, social media content for sure. No doubt. Now, for any of us to get to where we really want to be, to hit that upper echelon of success, we got to have mm-hmm. a team. Do, do you have a team behind you? How, how's that looking? So initially, I have been doing a lot of things on my own, which is really hard, especially when you're working a full-time job, too. Right. So um, last year, I decided, like, if I'm really trying to do this and like make it happen, happen, I got to get a team. So I just hired a brand manager um, towards the end of last year. So she's been building my site and working on my branding, logos, all that stuff. She's going to be um, doing creative directing for all of my shoots and my videos and stuff. So I'm really excited about that. And she's very knowledgeable as far as like the algorithms and social media and all that. Cause I don't really know much about all this new stuff. So she's right. really helping me with all of that. So I'm I'm excited. It definitely has been worth the investment. Um, but yeah, definitely have to have a team. I don't, I manage everything myself, but right. as far as brand managing, that's her thing. Right. And I would be open to a manager, but I've had a manager before and she didn't really understand my vision. Like the things that she was trying to set me up with, it just wasn't me. Like that's right. not my sound so we had to part ways but i feel like once the right person comes along sure but as for as of right now i'm not too big to where i can't handle those things myself no doubt. Um, no doubt. of course you know running contracts by lawyers stuff like that but right as far as any day-to-day stuff i take care of that no doubt now where can people see you perform i know you you're performing somewhere in dallas on the regular right well, one of my friends, Kay Cooks, he's a very talented um, guitarist. He plays at uh, Chocolate Secrets, and I accompany him sometimes, but that's not my gig. Okay. Um, prior to the pandemic, I had actually went and found the space to kind of do my own thing. So I'm thinking more towards the middle of the year, I'll start having my own stuff. But I would say, if anybody wants to know what I have going on, just follow me on instagram that's that's where i put all my information so okay what's, what's your handle we'll, we'll have it in the description what's your handle so it's underscore blythe dennis underscore there you go underscore blythe dennis underscore mm-hmm. now we we're we gonna close out now but before we close out uh i'm gonna make two requests you may deny me on this last one but the first one is <laughs> can can you give me your top five musical artists of all time? Well, see, that's hard. You know, I usually don't, I don't, and I'm going to tell you why I don't do favorites like that. Why? Because why not? I listen to stuff depending on my mood, mm. right? So what might be my favorite things to listen to this month, it might be different next month. But as far as artists, like you mean singers, just period. Rappers, singers, uh, any genre. Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely Jill Scott. She's my idol. Like, she is everything. I tell people when I meet her, it's just going to be a rap. She right up there at the top. So oh, yeah. she's number one. This is in no order. One of my favorites, yeah. Uh, Let's see. Jasmine Sullivan, for sure. We cannot sleep on Jasmine. One of my, one of my favorites. Amazing, amazing range. Yeah. Um, I already told you Big Crit, and I love I love Big Crit because he's so Southern. Oh, yeah. And he's so intellectual. Yeah. And he also incorporates a lot of different genres of music. I really like when he does those tracks with the jazz. Right. Um, jazz and blues yeah. beats. I really love those, but I also love the ones that got you, you speakers bumping, you know? Right, right. So he's versatile. So that's yeah. three. That's three. Hmm. 
man, I listen to so many people. Let me look at my phone right now. Yeah, they, they, they could be dead. They could be dead. Well, Marvin Gaye, we got to put Marvin Gaye up there. Because okay. he's, he's the best. You know you know what? I really wasn't into Marvin. Uh, really? I, I wasn't. But I got hip to this album recently. Uh, and he became one of my favorites. At least this is one of my favorite album, albums of all time. I believe it's called Dear, Dear, uh, Dear something. Actually, he created this album uh, mm -hmm. as far as a settlement, a divorce settlement to his wife. He had to give this album to his wife. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's called Dear something. Yeah, I got to look that up. But as Marvin, uh, let me look that up. Man. Yeah, that, that <laughs> album, that album was something, man. Let me see. Let me While you're looking at somebody who I've I discovered within the past like three four years, and I really love his um his last project, Sir. Yeah, Sir's nice. Yes, he's Sir amazing. Is nice. He is. That that last album, I could listen to that like over. At one point, I was listening to that every day. Yeah. Yeah. Hear my dear. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the okay. album. Here, my Marvin, dear. Marvin was troubled, you know, but he just is so soulful. I really yeah. love him. One of the songs that used to be a standard that I would do um, at open mics and stuff like that would be I Want You by Marvin Gaye. Love uh, that song. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice track. Now, were, were you done? So you had Marvin on that. Got one more, right? <laughs> We had, we had five, right? That was that Marvin, five? Sir, G. That's right. That is I thought five. so. You said sir. That's five. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> People really need to check in on sir. So, yeah. yeah I love they your, do. Yeah, I love your they musical do. taste. Yeah. You know they used to sing background for Jill, right? Did I think I heard that? that. Yeah, I think I heard that. Uh, he has a brother in the industry, too, right? Uh, yes, D Smoke. D Smoke. Yeah, yeah. He's nice, too. D Smoke is man. Yeah, he's nice too. If I could give one honorable mention, though. Okay, let's go I'm with gonna it. I'm going to say Snow, Snow Allegra. I you really like what? Snow Allegra. You know what? I, I've heard a lot about her, a lot of good things. I think I tried to check her out once. I really got to sit down and really get into her, check her out. But uh, people watch rave her tiny about her. Desk. Watch, watch okay. her tiny desk. I think you will like She's She's very dope. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah, now my, my other request, can you leave us out <laughs> with something acapella? <laughs> I knew that's what you were You know I'm going to do that, right? Yes. Um, what you want to hear? Some off yeah. of Country Soul Tunes? Yeah, some off the album. Mm, which one? Because I'm, I'm kind of rapping on, on a lot of that, so. Uh. I don't think on Lust Drunk. Lust Drunk, you're not rapping. I don't think. That's more of a okay. melody. All right. Never meant to catch feelings for you, but here we are. So close, but yet so far. Never even looked my way back in the day. Now I can't seem to get you up out my face. What's supposed to be a one and done, yeah. You might really be the one. Okay. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, people, she didn't even have to clear her throat. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's real singing there. That's singing. She didn't have to clear her throat and prepare. She just hit it. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, I want to thank you, Blythe Dennis. I want to thank you, thank man. This, you. Hey, it was my pleasure. People, go get that album. Country <laughs> Soul Tunes. It's everywhere. Go get it. I'm telling you, it's a treat. Thank you. I'll be in touch with you. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video and previous videos, go to www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate. That's www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate.
We provide services for the homeless, the mentally ill, the elderly, and the youth. 